This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to Clemens United Methodist Church and are thankful to be worshiping with you as brothers and sisters in Christ this morning. A few announcements we would like to share this morning. First, we invite you to our church-wide picnic on Wednesday, June 16th from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. on the back church lawn. Bring a blanket or chair to sit on, um, invite your family and friends, and pack a picnic for your family or pick up your favorite takeout on your way. We hope you will come and join us in fellowship, music, games, and popsicles. Also, please visit the events page on our church website if interested in helping with our Knights of, of North Castle Outdoor Vacation Bible School which will be held August 2nd through August 5th from 9 to 12. Pastor Sarah is still in search of a few additional volunteers to help. And lastly, mark your calendars to join a seven-week study on the Sermon of the Mount starting July 8th and led by Dave Lee. This study will meet on Thursdays from 4.30 to 6 via Zoom. To find additional information on this study, please visit our church website. At this time, we invite you to center your hearts and prepare your minds for worship. Please join me in the call to worship. In our times of trial and hardship, Lord, may we look to you as our cornerstone. A cornerstone to be our strength, to encourage and not tear down. A cornerstone to be our strength, to build up rather than destroy. Jesus, may we look to you as our spiritual cornerstone. Amen.
Thank you so much for the many ways that you partner with Clemens United Methodist Church through your time, talent, gifts, and service. If you would like to give a financial contribution to the church in support of our ministries and outreach, there are several ways to do so. At this time, you can give online at clemensumc.org slash give. You can text to give following the instructions found below on your screen, or you can mail or drop off your contribution to our church office. Again, thank you for all the ways that you support the ministries and outreach of this church. And as we turn to prayer, if you have any praises or prayer concerns you would like to share with our church staff and or church family, please email your prayer request to prayers at clemensumc.org or call our church office. We would love to hear from you and the ways in which we can pray alongside you with your concerns and celebrate with you through your joys. We invite you now to center your heart in prayer at this time. How firm a foundation, you saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he has said, to you who for refuge to Jesus have fled? with us so be not dismayed for he is our god our sustainer and strength he'll be our defender to cause us to stand upheld by his merciful almighty hand We'll press on, enduring the darkest of storm. And though even hell should endeavor to shake, he'll never, no, never, no, never forsake. He'll never, no, never, no, never forsake. How firm our foundation, how sure. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that we have been given, for the nesting birds, the summer play of children, and the rain that soaks our fields. We thank you for the days of plenty and joy. However, not all of our days bring happiness. There are days we walk through trials and hardships, and it is difficult to put one foot in front of the other. On all of these days, the good and the bad, may we be reminded that you are our cornerstone upon which all is built. 
You are the foundation upon where our strength arises. And Lord, as we look to you as our spiritual cornerstone, and as we lift up in prayer both those we have spoken aloud or those we keep within our heart, may we also pray the prayer that you taught your disciples, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our passage of scripture this morning comes to us from the first letter of Peter, reading the second chapter, verses 2 through 10. Hear these words. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer sac spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone which the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner. And a rock that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they do not, because they disobey the word and they were as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Peter said that we are like spiritual stones, living stones built into a spiritual house. Not too long ago, I ran across an article about Bislett Stadium in Oslo, Norway. Now, in case you're not up on your Norwegian sporting venues, 62 track and field world records have been set at Bislett Stadium. Th that's unheard of. Breaking one world record is hard enough, but 62 is a number so large that it far surpasses any other stadium in the world. 62 is a number so large that it makes people wonder why. Some have speculated that perhaps there's something in the Norwegian climate that brings out the best in athletes. I, I don't know. 
Others have said, no, it's the expectation. Athletes come to Bislett Stadium expecting great things to happen. And it does. U.S. Olympic runner Kenny Moore said, no, it's the crowd. The narrow track, the, the steep grandstands practically puts the fans on top of you. And the sound of 21,000 screaming, cheering fans forces the runner to take on the rhythm of the crowd for one more straightaway, for one more turn. Kenny Moore said, athletes run faster in front of great crowds. And when I read this, I couldn't help but think of the church. Friends, when people come into Clemens United Methodist Church, they can feel what's going on. And my prayer is that when people enter into this sanctuary, into this church, that they will feel the Holy Spirit. That the very climate of this church will be saturated with the Spirit. I, I pray that people will come to our church expecting God to do great things in their lives because God will. I pray that our church will be a place where we cheer for each other, encourage one another, and lift each other up in the Lord. That's what Peter was doing in our passage of scripture this morning. The first letter of Peter was written to Christians in Asia Minor. It was written at a time when new Christians were being ostracized, rejected, and persecuted. The new Christians, people who had recently given their life to Jesus Christ, needed a word of encouragement. And I can identify with that. When I was in junior high school, one day my teacher, Miss Cannon, told me to stay after school. I am not going to explain why I had to stay after school, but let me just say that it was, it was put to me as a declarative statement, stay after school. So when the last bell rang, and everyone went to the school buses, I stayed in my seat. I, I had no idea what was coming. I had no idea what they were gonna to do to me. So when all the buses had left, Miss Cannon walked back in the classroom and she said, John Fitzgerald, you're gonna be something someday. Now the, the jury's still out on that and at the time, all evidence was to the contrary, but that's what Miss Cannon said. You're gonna be something someday. You don't need this. Why would you want to put yourself in this situation? I believe in you, she said, and I know that you're better than this. In a strange way, Miss Cannon encouraged me at a time when I did not deserve encouragement. Miss Cannon said she believed in me at a time when I didn't believe in myself. Incidentally, when I graduated from high school, from college, from graduate school, each time I wrote Miss Cannon a letter to say thank you for believing in me. We all need words of encouragement. And that's what Peter's doing in our passage of scripture this morning. Peter's saying, you have received salvation. This is at the very beginning of the letter. Peter's saying, God has great things in store for you. Therefore, put away all malice, guile, envy, 
and slander. Malice is to be angry. Um, guile is to be deceitful with one another. Um, envy is to be resentful and slander is to speak ill of one another. Put all this away, says Peter. Rather, like newborn babes, long for the pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow into your salvation. Peter said, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. These are words of encouragement. Somewhat like Tommy Lasorda. Now, baseball fans will remember that Tommy Lasorda was the longtime coach and manager for the Los Angeles Dodgers, one of the greats. One day, a skinny kid with wire rim glasses walked into his training camp. Tommy Lasorda said he looked like he belonged in a library, not in a locker room. So Tommy Lasorda walked out on the field and said, hey kid, come here. He said, you need a nickname. He said, I'm going to call you the bulldog. You're a bulldog. Let me hear you growl. Now get out there and show us what you got. Do any of you baseball fans remember the Bulldog? His real name was Oral Hershiser. And he became one of the greatest all-time pitchers for the Los Angeles Dodgers. We all need words of encouragement. And that's what Peter's doing in our passage of Scripture this morning. He, he's encouraging these new Christians. It, it's sort of like back in my glory days when I played football at Duke. Okay, I know what you're thinking. I, I, I didn't play football for Duke. I played football at Duke. When I was in seminary, I was the second string wide receiver on the Duke Divinity School intramural flag football team. And, and, and when you're second string on a bunch of preachers, that is really bad. One, one afternoon, we actually won a game. We, we beat the chemistry department. And after the game, I was walking past the gymnasium where, where the, the real football players were lifting weights and I, I went in. No one stopped me to my amazement. I looked around. I walked up to the bench press because the great thing about the bench press is you can lay down while you're lifting weights. And so I laid down and I, I, I put my hands on the bar and I pushed and nothing happened. Um, I, I pushed with all my might and I got that bar to move about that much. About this time, there was a fellow named Jim who noticed that I was about to kill myself. And so he walked over and he said, hi, my name's Jim. Um, I couldn't help but noticing that you're new and um, wondered if you needed someone to spot you. I said, well, Jim, I, my name's John. And um, yeah, uh, it's my first time. And what does it mean to spot? And he said, oh, that's just where we lift weights together. And I said, well, yeah, I mean, this was a real football player. Yeah, let's, let's lift weights together. And so he said, great, you first. And he, he reached over and he took all those weights off of that bar, except for one little one. And um, he said, let's start with this. And so I started lifting, Woo, one, two. Yeah, this was a lot easier. Four, five, six. Okay, even the bar itself is pretty heavy. Seven, and Jim said, come on, John, give me eight. Give, give me nine, John, you got it in you. Come on, John, let's round it out. Let's give me 10, he said. And, and boy, when I got to that 10th, my arms were shaking, and I, I wasn't sure that I was going to make it, and suddenly Jim's hands were there. He didn't lift it for me. 
but rather he helped me guide it back to its resting position. And Jim said, good job, man, you did it. Woo-hoo. You did it, man, you got 10. And, and I said, yeah, that's pretty good what I did. And he said, now you spot me. And he reached down and he put every one of those weights right back up on that bar. And I started saying, come on, Jim, give me 15, give me 16. And I was praying to the Lord he didn't drop it because if he did, he was a goner. Jim and I lifted weights for the better part of the afternoon into the evening. And when it came time to leave, he gave me his phone number. And he said, anytime you need someone to spot you, you let me know. And as I walked across campus, I thought, that's what the church should be. A place where we encourage one another. A place where we help each other lift the burdens of life. The church should be a place where we strengthen each other in the Lord. Let let me tell you my my new favorite word. Let's see if I can pronounce this. My new favorite word is kintsukuri. It's a Japanese word. It means to be repaired with gold. In Japanese art, when a piece of pottery is broken in two or three pieces, and when it's repaired by filling in the cracks with gold, it's considered to be more beautiful for having been broken. That's true in the church also. When people come to Clemens United Methodist Church, when their lives have been broken and they come here to be repaired by God, That's beautiful. When people come here because the world demands perfection, the world may say that you're not smart enough or talented enough or rich enough or powerful enough or pretty enough. We come to this place where we accept one another because we're all part of a church family because we're all part of God's family. That's beautiful. When we come to this place and God works in the context of our imperfections, that's beautiful. To the early Christians who were facing persecution, to early Christians who were being rejected for their belief in Jesus Christ, Peter said, the world rejected Jesus. But the stone which the builders have rejected has become the chief cornerstone. We are like living stones that are being built into a spiritual house so that we may proclaim the deeds of God, the great works of God who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Peter said, once you were no people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. We're like spiritual stones being built into a spiritual house. And Jesus Christ is our cornerstone. In 2004, National Public Radio held a contest. Excuse me, the National Public Network. And and in this contest, they challenged teams of builders to build a scaled-down model of the pyramids of Giza. And the challenge was that each one of these teams would would be graded on how close they come to being like the original. They wanted 
the scaled down models to be built as accurately as the pyramids of Giza. Here was the catch. They could only use tools that were available between 4,000 and 2,000 BC. And the result was none of them could do it. I mean, these were, good, these were professional builders, and yet each of their models were off. In one team, they discovered that halfway through the project, their cornerstone was off by a fraction of a hair, just a fraction of a hair off. But you see, when, when the cornerstone is off, that means that each stone that is aligned to it will be progressively off. Friends, we live in a world that's off. Human nature is to be broken and flawed. All you have to do is watch the news to see that we are not in line with God. And yet Peter said our cornerstone is Jesus Christ. When we are aligned with him, when we have the same heart, mind, soul as the Lord, then we are, will be aligned with God and we'll be the Christians and we will be the church that Christ calls us to be. He is our cornerstone. I close with this thought. James Finmore Cooper wrote a book years ago called The Deer Slayer. Have you ever read this book? The story takes place during the French and Indian War, which was not a good time to be a pioneer or a settler. In one scene, there is a young girl named Hetty who's in a desperate situation. Living in their little log cabin out in the middle of nowhere, her father had been captured by Huron warriors. She didn't know what to do. She knew she had to do something or she would never see her father again. But she didn't know what to do. So finally she got up and she walked into the wilderness. Friends, this is just a little girl. She walked into the wilderness and she walked and she walked until she came to the Huron war camp. This little girl, Hetty, walked right into the war camp. She stood among all these warriors. She held up her family Bible and she said, these are the words of the great spirit. The great spirit says that you are to love your neighbor as yourself. The great spirit says you are not to return evil for evil. The great spirit says blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called children of God. This little girl read the Bible to them and she told them the teachings of Jesus. When she was finished, there was absolute silence in the Huron camp. Then the chief of the Hurons spoke and said, if these are the words that the great spirit has given to the Yingeese, Okay, Yingis. That's how the Huron pronounced English. The English. It's also where we get the word Yankee. If these are the words that the Great Spirit has given to the Yingis, then why do the Yingis not live by them? That's a good question. Hetty had a good answer. She said, Surely the great Huron chief knows that there are ye geese and Huron who do not follow the ways of the great spirit. But the great spirit watches over us all. We are all children of the great spirit. 
And the great spirit wants us to follow his ways. The Huron chief agreed. And so he let this little girl and her father go free. Friends, our human nature is flawed. We don't always do what God would have us to do. Our world is not in line with God. All you have to do is watch the news to know this. But we come to this place in our weakness, in our brokenness, and with our imperfections to grow in our salvation. That's beautiful. We come to this place not to tear each other down, but to build each other up, to cheer for each other, to encourage each other, and to build each other in the, up in the Lord. That's beautiful. Like living stones, we come to this place to be built into a spiritual house that we might declare the wonderful deeds of him who brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Peter said, we're living stones being built into a spiritual house. Peter said, Jesus Christ is our cornerstone and he is precious to us. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the teachings of Jesus. Thank you for the grace that you've shown us and the mercy. Lord, we ask that you will let Clemens United Methodist Church be a place that is saturated with your Holy Spirit. We ask, oh Lord, that in this place we will experience the wonderful, mighty deeds of you who have called us out of darkness into your light. We ask, oh Lord, that you will enable us to cheer for each other, not to tear each other down, but to build each other up and to encourage one another as we grow in our salvation, that we might be aligned with you and that our cornerstone will forever be our Lord Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. And now may God the Father, the great spirit, our creator, may God the Son, our redeemer, the cornerstone, the one who shows us the way, the truth, and the life, may God the Holy Spirit that comes into our hearts and empowers us to live the life that he has called us to live and to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. May God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. And all God's people said, Amen.